All right. Hey there, folks. My name is Ford Fisher, and this is my story of how I got cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, to be specific. Stage four, to be more specific. And that's a little picture of me from probably the late 80s, I'd say. I was a little baby then. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm very uh, new to this whole shooting a video and uh, I'm pretty nervous about this whole thing so this is gonna be real off the cuff and I'm uh, gonna be just making this up on my own I've got a little bit of an outline of uh, what I want to say for right now and uh, I just want to thank everybody all my friends and uh, family and <laughs> shoot, acquaintances and people I haven't even met that have gotten in touch with me and and, uh, and shared their stories of their friends and family or even in themselves that have had to deal with uh, cancer or uh, taking care of someone that's had cancer or something like that and it's just overwhelming to hear you know so much you know just positivity and, and great outcomes from a lot of people and uh, and a lot of things that people learned uh, if they didn't have a great outcome um, and, and how much of a better person it made them so uh, you know thank you all for getting in touch with me um, I guess uh, I want to really just get it started by uh, saying it was like probably the De December of 2018 when I really started kind of noticing something. I, I I guess my my fatigue was going up and and I was just uh, you know more and more tired just by doing the regular things. I was uh, I had actually started walking. Um, I, I lived about seven blocks or so from the beach. Uh, on on in Surfside Beach in South Carolina, uh, it was it was a great spot that I was in. Uh, not the nicest house, but it was the location was unbeatable. Um, and I could walk to the beach and come back, and that was a little bit over a mile. Uh, and I thought that was pretty good. And then I of course I'd be working, and uh, I just I, I thought I was doing enough. And and eventually I uh, did lose about forty pounds uh, throughout the year of 2018 um I, I was walking more often and stretching more often just uh, trying to eat a little bit better and then around December of 2018 is when my appetite started going and I uh really drastically changed what I ate I started eating a lot of salads and soup and sandwiches instead of burgers and sandwich and uh, you know heavy sandwiches and uh things like that I was just eating like peanut butter and jelly um so I had gotten down from about 350 360 to uh, just over 300 pounds, probably probably uh, like 310 or so, um, which was okay for me. Uh, I've been over 300 pounds or so since probably sophomore year of high school. Um, but around that Christmas, I came home and I noticed there were these kind of brown-looking splotches, uh, you know, in my lower ankle areas. And um, I ended up reading, doing uh, pretty extensive research actually one night. Uh, and I read that something where, uh, you know, over obese men and overweight men, uh, some of their blood vessels uh, kind of can explode, not explode, but uh, have splatters of blood on the inside of your legs. And it makes it almost like splatters of, it, it is literally splatters of blood on the inside of your, of your legs, if that makes any sense. And so it looks like, uh, almost like a bunch of birthmarks all over your, you know, your legs. I didn't really think anything of it, but they did say it, it's a possible sign of diabetes and or cancer. So I, I, I just, uh, I, I didn't look any further into it and I just went, went on ahead. And I still don't think that's really much of the issue. I just wanted to mention it to people. So maybe you're not very scared about it. If, uh, if you are overweight and you see that it's, it, it probably has nothing to do with it, but if there is a connotation, I had it. Um, so, moving on to January of twenty of uh, of nine of twenty nineteen, um, I tried to help some of my uh, good friends move uh, out of their house and into a new house, actually near to nearby to where I lived. And I, uh, I don't know what happened, but I couldn't lift things that I normally could lift. And I, uh, I felt terrible. I, I had to watch one of my friends, my best friends roll the biggest heaviest hunkiest piece of furniture i've seen in a long time one of these corner bookshelves or something all the way by himself outside of his house and roll it to to the street i i, I literally couldn't pick it up and i felt terrible 
Um, I was also supposed to go to their house after we packed up the truck and help them unpack. And for some reason, I just went home and decided to take a nap. I, I feel terrible to, about that to this day. Um, but eventually I came over and we had a good good time during that Royal Rumble, didn't we, Shu? Um, so, moving on to February of, uh, of 2019, the next month, um, I, uh, I started... Uh, I decided to just get a different job and I moved to working at Jimmy John's in Pauly's Island. I only worked one day there literally. And I mean, granted I was the bottom man on the totem pole and I got stuck with extra jobs and was expected to do the deliveries. I was the only delivery guy all day and you know what, what not. It was, it was an extra tough day, but I came home and I was just zonked. I was way beyond tired more tired than I than I wanted to be and and I remember when I was at the end of the shift there I kind of had to lay into the guy that was the manager he was much younger than I was and while he did know what he was doing he didn't do what he you know what his duties were and uh, I had been working for Jimmy John's on and off for two three years I knew what a manager was supposed to do and I was kind of stuck with a lot of their duties on top of my duties and I got kind of sick to my stomach. I, I feel kind of weird talking about it right now, even. And I ended up having dry heaves in the in the toilet. I had to run to the bathroom, and I had dry heaves. It scared me a little bit, but I, I just... I didn't want to believe anything was wrong with me. I, I don't know why, but I, I just did. Um, Let's see, what else are my notes here? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I remember I fell into my couch that, that day and was just a 10 out of 10. I was just tired. I was out. I didn't even, I kept putting off going to get dinner or even making dinner for myself until like eight o'clock that night because I just didn't want to get up. And that was just unlike me. Um, so fast forward to about a month later, beginning of March, uh, 2019. Wow. I'll put 2020 on there. Ugh. Um, beginning of March 2019, I uh, went up to Raleigh, North Carolina for a uh, regional uh, Magic the Gathering tournament, which I have top eighted before. I think it was 2017 I got top eight out of uh, like 350, 360 of the best players in the area. Um, it's, it's a pretty big deal uh, for a lot of people, and um, I was proud to do it, so I was trying to do it again uh, this year, and I... Uh, uh, I, I didn't do well. I, I think I, I did okay, but I think I got like 65th place, 66th place or something like that out of uh, about 300. Uh, for you magic nerds out there, I uh, took a Merfolk deck, Mono Blue, um, something I've kind of been become to know to, to use mainly over the years. Um, anyway, everything went smoothly until uh, on the drive home, I noticed that my uh, left leg was swelling up and I mean, it was all the way down to my foot and it was really kind of puffy. And at the same time on the way home, the, uh, the left part of my jaw was kind of numb. Um, geez, I don't want to say kind of, it was completely numb. I mean, this whole area, probably down to where the, where the chin is like right around here, all the way up to about here was completely numb. And I could, you know, reach my finger in my, in my mouth and it just, it was like you were, you know, I'd just seen the dentist. Um, so I just, I had to pull over several times at rest areas, uh, on the way home. And I had to walk up and down the, the rest area and just try to kind of mitigate the, the swelling in my leg. It was, it was throbbing. And I, I was, I was really worried about, um, uh, deep vein thrombosis, which I had heard about for a lot of overweight people. And, um, I just, I, I didn't know what to do with that. And I, I don't know. I just had to get home. And, uh, so I did. And it, and, you know, just getting a good night's sleep in my own bed and, um, I guess calming down after kind of a stressful weekend. Uh, you know, it's a surprisingly stressful time to be playing in a big tournament like that. Um, so I just figured, Hey, I guess I'm okay. I, you know, it's fine. Um, moving on to the, uh, mid March, uh, you know, I would, uh, 
I was still walking, but I was getting more and more tired uh, every time, and I kind of started cutting my walk down uh, to about half mile, and halfway back, I would turn around, and it, it was it was getting tough, and uh, you know I was unable to sleep. I had terrible night sweats, um, and I would be really cold uh, in the day and the night, and I mean. It wasn't even especially cold outside. I mean, I, I don't think it even got down to like 15 or 20 degrees. It was, I mean, yeah, that's, that is below freezing and very cold, but I was shaking. I mean, I was just freezing and I had to get a, uh, uh, one of those, uh, space heaters actually to, to, you know, help bring it down a little bit. And I mean, yeah, it helped, but it, it didn't do well. Um, and then I learned uh, about just a, an estimation on how to count how many heartbeats you had uh, in your in your body, and and I could just feel my heart beating really fast. And so I would check it, and and uh, it was something like over 120 beats uh, a minute. And that's when I really started getting kind of scared, and my jaw numbness didn't go down. I thought that it would go down um, after like a two three days, and it didn't. So after those two or three days, I uh, I called the dentist, uh, just a local dentist down the street. I had never seen him before, um, and I wanted to get an X-ray done, maybe see what what needed to happen. So once I explained everything that was going on with me, uh, he es- essentially told me I can't help you, but I know who possibly can, a dental surgeon. So I was sent to a dental surgeon uh, up the road, um, closer to Myrtle Beach, and uh he did, he did like an x-ray of my jaw area and, uh, he, you know, he told me that he could see some kind of hole in near my gum or my mouth area. And he was set to do some kind of surgery on that for a couple of days. And then he brought me back into his office, I believe, or maybe he called me and I can't remember, but I think I saw him in person when he was looking at the x-ray results again. And, um, he told me that he could see part of a lymph node in my neck was uh, was enlarged on the left side, uh, the side where the numbness was. And but his his uh, 3D X-ray machine couldn't see all of it, so he needed to send me to an imaging center. That's I believe that's what it was called, and that was not far away from where he was. But they had uh, a way to just do like a full body MRI, uh, essentially, and. Um, he, he, you know, uh, as true with pretty much anybody, if you hear the words enlarged and lymph nodes in the, in the same sentence, you know, the first thing you think about is, is some type of cancer. So I, I you know, I was afraid at that point, you know, uh, and, and I was also, uh, after the imaging center, um, they, I don't know how to explain it. I was so tired at this point when I was walking around. I had lost so much blood. I didn't realize I was losing blood and I was constipated uh, beyond belief. I mean, it had been probably five, six days and um, I'm sorry to be so graphic and, and, you know, brutal about it, but that's what it was. I had a tough time walking from the parking lot to the waiting room in, in this imaging center and I couldn't even really get up to fill out the paperwork to be a new patient in there they had to bring the paperwork to me and I remember it was some kind of like iPad or Kindle or type thing that I had to put everything in on and I, I barely got through all that so they they did me through the imaging center and and you know it, it was fine um, and uh, they they uh, asked me to go to an ear nose and throat doctor um, which which I did but uh, I guess backing up a little bit, uh, I did play golf with uh, two of my good friends, and uh, we only got through nine holes. Uh, we were had a free round uh, to play down at the TPC in Myrtle Beach, and uh, we only got through nine holes because of the the storm that was coming in. And um, thankfully, we only did play nine holes. That was on I think March twentieth or so of last year, and uh, they told me I was extremely pale when I got off the course, and uh, we ate, we sat down, and I ate a you know a big lunch, and uh, they told me I got a little bit uh, of blood you know in my face, and I looked better. But I remember them telling me that now, and and uh, that actually just hit me uh, as I was going through all of this. Um, 
you know, I'm sorry for all this information being thrown at y'all, but uh, this is just this is just how I'm going to be doing it. This is my story, and uh, if you have any questions for me, please leave leave them in the comments or send me a private message or uh, friend me on Facebook. Uh, you know, email will be in the description if I can remember to do that. You can email me also if you'd like. I'd like to help anybody with uh, with any kind of explanation or or anything that they're experiencing as well. Um, so, uh, to get back on track, I was asked to go to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. I went to her, uh, my mother had come down actually from Richmond, Virginia, uh, the day, uh, let's see, Thursday, this was, I guess, April 4th of last year, and, uh, she had come down and she told me I looked very ashen and white and, uh, very pale, and, uh, more so than usual, and, uh, you know, I went to this uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor with her, and uh, it was right near the hospital, near Myrtle Beach, and uh, they told me, she told me that while I did look uh, like I was uh, anemic, I, that the hospital wouldn't have admitted me that day. Um, she did me wrong. I, you know, I don't want to, she just start, She just steered us the wrong way. So I got blood taken that same day uh, at, a, at a lab core right down the road or I think it was right down in the same office and, uh, you know, and I didn't think anything of it. So the, you know, I spent the night at the, at my place in Surfside and, uh, woke up the next day and got a call, uh, probably around 11 o'clock or so. And, uh, the woman from, it was from LabCorp, uh, they had processed my blood and results and she was, uh, very urgent when she called me and, and uh, it was on my cell phone, my mother had actually gone out and gotten some, she was getting some groceries at the Pickle Wiggly down the road. And, um, she called me very urgently. She told me to pack a bag, uh, pack an overnight bag and that I needed to get to the ER immediately. And I remember I was still kind of cavalier about it. And I, I mean, after all of this, I was still kind of cavalier about it, which I don't understand why, but I, you know, I asked, I kind of, scoffed it. I said, so you want me to go to the ER today? And she said, no, right now. And, and that really, that's what snapped me out of it. You know, I, I, I was taking it kind of seriously. I was a little bit scared, you know, about what I had, but I, I, I was thinking maybe it was, you know, mono or, or something, um, that was easy to take care of. And I remember reading all the stuff on the internet and I mean, when you're reading the internet and what you, what all your different, uh, symptoms, I mean, you could have anything from, you know, allergy to pollen or you got cancer. I mean, it's, it was such a huge spectrum of things that it could have been. I just wasn't thinking that a 32 year old man that was healthy otherwise than being obese would have cancer. So I, uh, I went to the ER, we rushed down to the ER as soon as possible and I checked myself in, I walked in by myself while she was parking and, um, they, uh, they, you know, did all the testing and, and everything. And I was trying to keep an upbeat, you know, I was making jokes and keeping an, uh, you know, a good mood. I thought among all the people and they were smiling and very happy and, but at the same time I, I felt the seriousness of it. I was given passwords and, and numbers out to my mom about, you know, with my phone and bank account and all that kind of stuff. And just in case, you know, you just never know. So they ended up taking me to the ICU and they were very uh, quick about it. They told me that, um, my hemoglobin level was at 3.0. Um, and that they were surprised that I was walking in on my own, um, without any help when I checked into the ER uh, if anybody's a nurse or anybody knows that, that deals with blood or, or, I mean, is experienced with this kind of stuff. Um, and even if you're not, uh, especially if you're not, this is uh, some good information. Maybe, um, if you're healthy, your hemoglobin level is normally going to be in the teens, um, between like probably 13 and 18. And, and if you work out a lot and you're biking a lot or, you know, very active person, you're probably, you could be in the twenties as far as I know. Um, I don't know where the ceiling is, but I do know that 3.0 is, is, uh, essentially no blood in your body. I mean, uh, it's, it's really bad. And I was just, I, I don't know what I was doing. I don't know how I was doing it. And it, and it just came about. And, uh, I mean, I was at the level of fainting. I mean, I couldn't even walk to my mailbox that was like 300 feet away and come back without being completely out of breath and, 
it, it's it's one of the scariest things that, that I've ever experienced. Um, but once they told me that, it really put everything into perspective, and I think I ended up getting seven pints of blood. Seven is that it? It was it was something like that. It was <laughs> it was it was a long night that night. Um, I don't have the greatest family history as far as uh, as far as diseases go. I mean, I've got uh, I, I've got an uh, as far as my family history goes, they've they, some of my members have had uh, autoimmune lung, uh, liver disorder, lung cancer, uh, colon cancer, two heart attacks, uh, bone marrow cancer. It's I mean breast breast cancer throughout the the women uh it's it's a it's not the best family history in the world but hey it's my family right <laughs> um i got to uh basically spend that night in the hospital uh uh in the icu and the next night uh this was around this was the exact time that uva my the my father's team that he played football for was winning the NCAA tournament. They were in the Final Four, and uh, this was the whole time that I was uh, actually in the Myrtle Beach Hospital, and they were sending me down to MUSC. Uh, the thing that was, the thing that was the funniest. Uh, this was during the Final Four game, and I laugh at it now, but I was so upset when it happened. Uh, this uh, girl came in, a nurse, and she took. She was told to take fifteen vials of blood, folks. I'm talking like. This size vial, 15 out of my arm. They had just given me seven pints of blood that uh, in transfusions. Um, but they took 15 vials of blood to test me, and they didn't know if it was some kind of leukemia or lymphoma or if it was non-Hodgkin's or Hodgkin's. They didn't know, so they wanted to do all these tests. I was moved down to Charleston. Not even nine hours later, I was down there in a bed in Charleston at MUSC, and I asked if they could use. I was I was getting blood taken there immediately as I got there too, and of course, if anybody knows that works in in hospitals or nurse or is a nurse or anything like that, they couldn't use any of that blood that they had just taken from me. I was so upset, I couldn't believe it. Um, and it was all out of my arm. I, I didn't have like a pick in my arm or or a port set up like I do in my chest right now. It, it was it was unbelievable. So, um, that night I moved over to MUSC and that was the first night I spent, uh, in, and it was in, uh, like a cancer level ward, I guess. I, I don't know if you want to call it a ward, maybe a wing. The whole floor was, uh, cancer patients. And, uh, so we were pretty sure what I had. And, uh, that first night I got to watch WrestleMania live, uh, from my phone, I couldn't hook it up on my TV and all that, but um, all in all, I felt a lot better. This was uh, this week in the hospital that I spent at MUSC. I actually felt okay once they had given me a lot of blood and kept giving me more. I think I got several pints throughout the week um, and other things. Uh, like I had uh, this thing called a pick set into my arm. I'm not sure if anybody can see that, but I've still got some scars. It's right, right, right around here. Um, and it's basically like a, um, uh, a portal of, of things where they can, they can stick needles into you a lot easier without having to stick your arm all the time. And it's, it kind of hangs from your arm, but it's, it's like, uh, like two USB ports or three of them essentially hanging from your arm. Um, which is kind of a pain, but you know, you're in the hospital. What else are you going to do? Right. So, uh, that's, that's what they did to me. Um, I remember the the problem. They had a problem putting it in my arm at first. Uh, they tried to do it uh, in my room, and they got like eighty percent uh, through for some reason. And uh, some kind of they said some kind of smaller vein had uh, blocked the big vein that they were trying to hook it up to, and they couldn't do it. So they had to pull all of it out and send me downstairs somewhere in in some kind of surgical area and get it put on with. Uh, like local anesthesia and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I guess it was something that had happened in my arm that wouldn't let it, uh, you know, be put in there like normal. Um, so then I was, uh, I spent pretty much the whole week in there. And that Friday, uh, April 12th is when the doctor came in and finally told me that he was 99% sure 
that I had Hodgkin's lymphoma stage four. Um, for anybody that, that doesn't know, um, stage four is about as bad as you can get. I actually had stage four B is what it's known as. Um, to put it bluntly, I, I was on death's doorstep. Stage five is literally death. Um, there's no better way to say it. So, I, uh, you know, as far as that goes, as far as getting Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, Hodgkin's, I was told, has a 70 to 80% cure rate. And, um, and, and it's just, uh, and, and especially if you're younger, it's even better. I think it's something like 87% cure rate, 70 to 87% cure rate or something like that, uh, compared to about 17% on your non-Hodgkin's lymphomas. And, and it's so much harder to treat because there's so many different types, according to the doctor and, and my very little bit of research on it. Um, but Hodgkin's lymphoma is something that is, uh, has been around for a long time and has been, uh, much easier to treat, uh, I believe, uh, comparatively to, to non-Hodgkin's and, and any other kind of leukemia or anything like that. Um, but the reason I was stage four was because it had gotten into my lungs, my liver, uh, and my bone marrow, especially my bone marrow, uh, is what makes it stage four B. Um, that means that, and it was in pretty much all of my lymph nodes, my lymph, almost all of my lymph nodes from my neck down, uh, were enlarged and fully involved as they say. Um, I mean, it was, it was throughout my whole body. And, uh, so I got my first chemo treatment there at MUSC that night. I believe it was, it was actually that Friday night around midnight. Uh, so almost, you know, I guess Saturday morning technically. And, uh, that was my first treatment. And then I was sent downstairs to get a port put into my chest. Um, I don't know if it can be really seen. Yeah, you can see there's a scar right here. And uh, that scar right there is uh, is essentially where that pick that I explained to you is hanging off my arm. It is installed into your chest. And, um, and that's where I get blood taken from. Uh, and I had it during my chemo treatments. And I have to get it taken still. Uh, every six to eight weeks um, and it's really you just I mean it's it's because I was a much larger person um, I I had to have a longer needle installed and they had to push it further into me so I have to have I think a one inch needle go into me um, it's not fun but hey you know it saves my life and uh, I've got some kind of cream I put on it uh, it's a lidocaine came cane uh, lidocaine cream <laughs> that uh, numbs the area and it does a really great job uh, you know as long as I take in a deep breath um, anybody that's really scared of needles ask for the lidocaine cream if you ever can you pretty much have to ask for it they won't really offer it um, it's for wusses only so you know take that into accord though too um, so I had uh, I went downstairs to get my my uh, port put in and I had a great time actually uh, surprisingly they put me under local anesthesia which it gets you a little loopy, but the main thing is that it makes this whole area completely numb. And I, and the only thing I could really feel was that the guy that was putting it in was pretty much slamming on my chest. And, uh, but I, I could, I could tell that he was doing it, but I couldn't really feel the pain from it, which I'm sure was probably excruciating. Uh, <laughs> but I wasn't really there. So, um, the, the most fun thing about it was that uh, one of the other doctors that was there, he immediately put on a bandana as everything was getting started, and it was a University of Georgia banner, bandana. And so, naturally, I had to ask him if he had heard of my favorite band, Widespread Panic. <laughs> he didn't even say anything. He just opened up his phone, and he put on some, some kind of mix, I guess, he had on his phone. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure how he did it but it was a bunch of uh old widespread panic and great just great music and uh we talked about you know seeing shows that we had seen throughout the years and he was uh probably about eight years older than me so he had he had seen uh mikey hauser a few times when i when i hadn't and uh you know it was just a great conversation and i remember wanting to stay down there a little longer to talk to him uh, after they had already put my port in and they were rolling me out and i said no no i want to talk to him some more 
So wherever you are, if you see this, uh, Georgia guy, you were, you were a great conversation. Thank you for getting me through that. That really helped me a lot. Um, so again, uh, that's really what I want to put into, uh, you know, what is it put into perspective is, is that when you have Hodgkin's lymphoma compared to non Hodgkin's or leukemia or, um, pancreatic or lung, which are two of the, uh, the worst cancers that you can get the most, most aggressive, um, as far as if I had to get cancer, I feel like I, I won the lottery. Um, you know, I don't know how else to say it. You know, I, 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 I have the worst version of the best type of cancer. I don't, I don't know how to explain that, but that's what it is. Um, I, you know, that's really all I've got to say right now. So I, I'll leave y'all with that. Uh, if you have any questions for me, please get in touch. Like I said, through any of the portals or ways that, that I mentioned before, I've got email. Uh, you can leave comments on here, send me a message on here. You can, um, do anything Facebook or, or, you know, Twitter. I think I've got the same thing, all the same name, moon time dweller. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's just what I got to say. I mean, shoot, this was, what is it? It's April 4th right now. So this was right out about a year ago. Tomorrow is when I checked into the hospital by myself, uh, walked in and, they were on their, they, their jaws were on the floor essentially when they take, had taken my blood and saw, uh, you know, the, the, the hemoglobin level was 3.0. Uh, it's all been a surreal experience. Um, you know, something that I never expected, but I think it'll, uh, you know, hopefully make me a better person. And, uh, it's taught me a lot to take care of myself. Um, and, uh, you know, take care of others and, and, Always tell them that you love them. So, thank y'all very much. And I will be in touch. Bye bye.